started this going now. Okay. I'm going to go over here now and put that on there. Hey, y'all. Is anybody on? <clears throat> you didn't make one. Hmm? You didn't make me any tea. I'm going to. It's not 7.30 yet. It's probably not. Okay. There's five people watching. Hey, five people. How you know that? Little oh. eyeball. <laughs> so hopefully this is this time one on Facebook. Hey, there they are. Hey, here we go. Hey, Higher Grounds Farm. How are you? What state are y'all in? That's, we met them at uh, the meet and greet. Remember? No. You don't remember? You'd know their faces. Probably. You'll know their faces. You just didn't remember their name. I have to pull a picture up. Oh, so I think I. You remember? They were right Real there. Real sweet in, couple. Yes, right there yeah. in front of the, mm -hmm. the booth. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sure do. St. Clair County. Yep. Yep. I'll show him a picture of who you are, and then he'll remember. <laughs> Hey, Meg's little house in the country. Melanie from East Tennessee. East Tennessee. Hey, Luanda with Adventures with Me and T. Hey, Becky. Hey, Sheila. Hey, Mary from Texas. Mary. Hope you saw me wave back when you waved. <laughs> uh, who do we miss? Eddie or Edie? Edie. There we go. Thanks for um, spelling that out for me. Thank you, Zach, for helping us get this started. <laughs> Cat's Tiny Kitchen. Hey, Zach. Head Family Farm. Woohoo! Neva, or is it Neva? Neva or Neva? I'll click up there until you because you're just on. From, where is that? On, on, Anika? How do you say that? Don't you know? Don't you? It's not. <laughs> And then it looking good. There's old Fern. Hey, Harvey. Haley. Glad. Haley. Oh, shoot. Where's I she? can't see. You got your glasses Yes, on? I need some tea. Here. England. It's 1230 a.m. here in England. Oh, my gracious. Yes. Did you stay up just to hang out with us? New Hampshire. New Hampshire. All right. Do you know any Brit nails, uh, Haley, in, in England? I, I hear there's a lot over there. <laughs> they must be. Mm. Cousins. Deb, good evening from Pennsylvania. PA. All right. Wow. We got people from all over. I don't know where where that Alabama Neva Pierce. O N Y C H A. I've never heard of that. Me. Lived here my whole life. Well, there's lots of places we haven't ever been, Tracy. Yeah, but Alabama? Yeah. I mean, I never heard of it though. Mm -hmm. Me <laughs> <coughs> G and G. Hey Catherine, how's it going? Zach is a technical genius. <laughs> yes, he is. Oh. Thank God for Zach. We had to have a little FaceTime before. Yeah. He we was came probably on freaking tonight. out. <laughs> Tracy's like, you don't need to bother him with FaceTime. Or you need to at least text him first before you FaceTime. And then he answered. That's etiquette. Uh, that not is, when you're friends. That not is. country friends. <laughs> You can call me anytime. Are you chasing cows, Catherine? Oh my gosh. Ron Na Ava. Nava. Okay. Nava. I got it now. Uh Des Moines, Iowa. I'd hey, love to come to Iowa. Hey, Diana, our groovy grandma from Toledo, Ohio. Groovy. Hello from South Carolina. Hello, John. Good evening from Morgan City, Louisiana. New hey, Pam. My son's Arkansas. up in New Hampshire right now. Hey, Carol from Arkansas. I just come in catching geese. <laughs> <laughs> Onika. Hey, Melanie from Windy, Georgia. I saw somebody, said, Meg's little house in the country said it's going to be 45 degrees today in East Idaho. It was. Good gracious. Oh, um, and we'll be back in the 60s next week. Woo. Wow. It's crazy. I know you're ready for Morgan some City, sunshine. Louisiana. Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Hey, Janet. Hey, Lynn Weldon from Chelsea, Alabama. Lynn Weldon. 
That's Brett's wife. I know, but she okay. needs to get a better icon there. It's got an Auburn something awful. <laughs> Auburn, Auburn awful something. Oh. I don't know. Don't get off, Lynn. Just Joe he's... Price. Hey, Gene Jr. from Florida. Joe Price. Do you know him? <laughs> I'm trying to think. I can't see. I... Joe Price. How do they know him? Gene Jr. <laughs> he must it's know. hilarious. New uh, North Carolina. Hey, Beverly. Hey, Carol from Springfield, Missouri. Ever heard of Rattlesnake yes. Radio in Op Alabama? Op Alabama. Yeah, we know Op Alabama. Yeah, I don't think I would get into a tank of glass with rattlesnakes in it. Oh, my gosh. I know I'm not doing that. Mm. Well, hey, everybody. We're glad y'all joined us. We decided to give our name, our live, a name and a theme. What's because, our theme? Because I, I just, I was like, this has got to, like, we got to make something of this. This has got to be mass. have a name and be cool and all that stuff. So, so I got with the uh, hey, hey Renee. Renee. I got with uh, our son Chance and Renee yesterday, and I was like, okay, we need a name for our life. We need we need a name. We need a title. We need a theme. And we were going back and forth, and Chance was like, I think you should call it the Farm Table. And I'm like, ah, that. That's it, the farm table. And then my mind started going crazy of uh, we'll bring different things to the table that we've harvested and that we're, that we're making and maybe some different foods that we make and drinks that we make. She won't and, pour mine yet. I want some tea. And just share different stuff like <laughs> that at our farm table. And y'all pull up a chair and we'll chat. I loved that. I thought that was so cool. What do y'all think? Y'all like it? Hey, Pop from Just Dig It Farms. Pop and Mom's on here. We're going to have to get them to come over and be on our live with us. Yep. Y'all need to come be on our live with us. Let me go Monday holler at the, at the door. Come be <laughs> on our live. <laughs> no, nah, we'll get with y'all next time. Uh, name is Catchy and Perfect. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you, Higher Ground Farm. Sharon Sexton from Virginia. Hope Gene sings. I told him he needs to sing our new uh, our new theme song. Tommy White, Joseph T is watching. Are you watching, Tommy? <laughs> Tommy is my cousin. I used to know that. <laughs> we Tommy White. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we grew up together. We had some good times, didn't we, Tommy? Oh boy. I'm surprised we're still alive. Hey, he hey, made homestead. Allison. Yes. I'm glad everybody likes the name. Everybody likes the concept. Me too, because I get to eat like lavender <laughs> cookies. She makes the best sugar cookies and puts lavender in them. Mm, they're good. In the garden. They're good. So we need good. to make some of those and I'll share the recipe uh, with y'all. But I thought that'd be really cool. We could make some different things that we've harvested, maybe add the recipe and maybe y'all could share some things with us. I just thought that'd be a lot of fun. Um, Tonight we are having an herbal tea. She is. Still and I'm gonna mine. pour I'm gonna pour you some. God. But this I've been having a lot of fun just experimenting with different tea blends. Do y'all know that they're hey Wendy. Wendy Rich? That's my high school girlfriend. We had some good times, didn't we, Wendy? Um uh you like my glasses, Diana. Thank you. Anyway, our herbal teas. So there is a whole art to herb tea blending, like a whole art, a whole thing, and d blending different herbs for different issues and blood pressure mm -hmm. and sicknesses and stuff like that. So I've been kind of diving a little deep into it. And tonight I've been experimenting with our, what is it? I was diving. I've been experimenting with my little tea blend here. So I've got... This is lemongrass. Lemongrass. I did, and I'm writing down my my quantity too because I'm trying to get them perfect. What I really really like. I did la recipe for lavender cookies. Okay, I'll do it. I will put the recipe for my lavender cookies on um 
on the website. We'll get it on the website. We had a little might take might take a little bit because I have to write it up. Then I have to get it to Jacqueline and Jacqueline has to put it up for me. So I'm going to make myself a note, but I will get the lavender sugar cookies on the website. Just well, stick at farms.com. We used to have a little Yorkie in and that joker was addicted to peanut butter cookies, sugar, sugar cookies. cookies and he would just, Oh, mercy. he loves sugar cookies. Okay. So my tea blend tonight is lemongrass um two tablespoons it is lemon balm and this is six tablespoons because lemon balm when you dry lemon balm it loses its its flavor and its uh, the taste and everything of it over time so i added more of it i've got lavender two tablespoons of lavender you don't want to use too much lavender because then it's, it tastes like you're drinking flowers um i got yarrow and I did a tablespoon of this. I should be telling you what these are for. Yarrow is good for inflammations, colds, bronchitis, asthma, stomach issues. It's a, a wonderful free tea to make tea out of it. But it's also a really good styptic herb. So you can take these leaves, dry them. That's all this is, is just dried leaves. I crushed them up. And you can put them on a wound that's bleeding and it will stop bleeding immediately. Just remember, if you've got a really, really deep cut, not to do that, though, because it'll heal the surface of the cut before it'll actually heal the uh, inside mm -hmm. of the cut. So you Zach says he uses that. spearmint, too. Yes, spearmint. I didn't have any dried mint. I've used it all. Um, the lemon balm is, is called the gladdening herb, and that just calms you, lifts your spirits, makes you happy, and it also helps uh, aid in sleep lemongrass same thing it uh, helps reduce inflammation and what else did i add i added chamomile of course that you can see i'm out i'm almost out of my chamomile but this is really good for fever it's good for um inflammation it's good for colds it helps you sleep um i'm gonna get some tea yep elderflower I love to use elderflowers. This is awesome for sinuses, bronchitis, uh, colds. That's the one on elderberries. Yes, okay. this is the oh, elder yellow. because this is the flower. Okay. That's the cool thing about elderberries. You can use on elderberries, you can use the berries, which, you know, they're super high. And if antioxidants. you get the green ones, they're poison, right? And they're, if you pick them yes, they're, you don't pick green elderberries. You have to you wait till dead. they ripen. And you can also use the flowers before the berries form. And that's what this is, is the flowers. Really, really good for sinus issues. So I added that. And then I added a little bit of Ceylon or Ceylon cinnamon. And this is straight from the cinnamon tree. I used to have a cinnamon Sweet. tree and it died and I, I haven't replaced it yet. And then, of course, just to get farms honey. And y'all know honey. The benefits of honey is just uh, wow. that was the chamomile that I just used was Roman chamomile. But I grow German and Roman and definitely grown both of those this year. But that one was the Roman. Mm. So we use a lot of honey. And honey has all the benefits. What? It's all the antis okay. and it's all the benefits. Say what? How come? I guess I'm going through some uh, midlife Joe brain Price. issues. Joe Price. Joe Price. Joe I'm Price. hooked on lavender chamomile tea. Yeah. I love lavender chamomile tea. So I'm just trying to mix up all these different ones and um, see what we really like. I like this. This is really good, but it's missing a little something. It needs a little more. I don't know, like a little more tart to it, I think. Maybe it's because I used too much honey. <laughs> Put some blueberries in it. I need honey. Diana needs honey. We hopefully will. Oh, Joseph. I was about to say Joseph. Jo I was about to say oh, Joseph. Oh, my God. Don't come up here calling you by you. I'll be. I'll be listed. My name is Eugene. Joseph Come on now. went with us on um, <laughs> mission trip. Yep. To What's up, Joseph? Guatemala. Yeah. The deer slayer. Try it. See if you like it. Finally, I get some tea. Wendy loves our name. How's those mm. grandbabies, mm, Wendy? Good. That is good. Click back on the other one. Uh. 
Where? What do you mean? Sure. I'm not clicking on nothing. <laughs> I am not. Oh boy. Um. So what do you think? It's pretty good. Oh, it's very good. You are gonna have your cabinet like Honeystead before long. Yep. I hope to. I love. Oh my gosh, she has a whole herb studio with a whole kitchen set up, and it's just full of herbs and lemon cookies with. Hey, lavender. Chris. Oh my. What now? Lemon cookies. Me and Tisa's lemon cookies with lavender icing. Oh my god! Oh, I can do that. You know, Mimi, I can't wait to the to the um, YouTube. Yeah. Mimi's baked. Yes, she makes She's, some of the best cookies. Her oh and her sister gosh. are just so sweet and so Ooh. cute and so talented. We're talking about Mimi's baked goods and Muscadine Creek Creamery. They're two sisters. Hey. Mimi does baked goods cookies <clears throat> and oh what's her name? My mom went blank. Muscadine Creek Creamy Creamery, which is her sister. What's up, Canada? Does goat's milk soap. Ontario. I've been to Quebec. <laughs> Love me some Canada. Yep. So this is pretty good. This herbal uh, tea is pretty good. Really good. It's what we're bringing to the table hey, tonight is herbal tea. Just dig it. Um, what's up, Chris? How was uh the Irish? <laughs> so look, y'all had a good trip. Who are you talking to? Chris Maley. Oh, uh, good evening from Missouri. Missouri. All right, go Jean Go. Boy, <laughs> that's their name, go Jean Go. Well, I tell you what, y'all getting some storms out there. They're headed our way. You should fix the cup of tea this evening, especially if it's cold. <coughs> um, so what was anybody affected? Anybody in Alabama? We had a big freeze last week. Oh, yeah, I was gonna tell when y'all gotta help keep me on track. Our honey, we should be harvesting honey in June. First of June or the end of May? Maybe the end of May. It's their business. I don't know. They're filling them up quick. We only have so yeah. many honey supers We're, per hive. And when they fill up that last one, we have to I harvest. bought some new supers for all of the hives. And we're going to try this weekend to put some out there. Hey, Jackie. Check them out. Will you please post tea ingredient amounts? I will. I sure will. Um, Who's your daddy? <laughs> let's see. How can I? How can I do that? Uh, After the live, I'll come back and type them in to the comments. The tea ingredients, Dahlia, tea amounts. Dahlia's come back. Is that what it says? I need Dahlia's answer. come back. Yep. Cowbell, Cowbell Farms. Hey, Jacqueline. Um, Chris will be there too. <clears throat> do are you asking? Do Dahlia's come back? It's no, Cowbell. they don't. They don't. They're like zinnias, or there are. If you're talking about the dahlias from the Floret collection, they're not going to come back. They're going to be just like an annual flower, like a zinnia. Um, the freeze nipped them back. The other. Oh, I got you. Okay, the freeze got them. Yep. Actually, I I still have my dahlias, my zinnias. I still have just about everything in my greenhouse. The only thing I had planted was my cool season vegetables. <clears throat> and they got it. Speaking of we, greenhouse, she's still. We've still got critters out there. We don't know quite sure what they are. Unless I'm pretty positive it's mice. Yeah. But they're getting her seeds. Yep. And uh, I put some glue them. traps out there, but no luck yet. But the freeze got my. So we did a live on Monday night. Super early Tuesday morning, we got up and left. We went out of town. We went and seen Koopy. our grandbaby and Chance and Renee. And um, we had that freeze come in. And I didn't cover because I, the actually the danger of the frost like four, eight, four was like to 4 7, to 7. 8, 8 and I knew we were going to be gone and I wasn't going to be here to uncover all weekend. All, well, for like two or three days. And um, so I didn't cover Yes, I'm getting kitty cats. As soon as I drove, all I had planted was all my cool season stuff in one bed. 
And when I drove up, I could see the yellow leaves flapping in the wind, and I knew they all got hit. I think that they may come out of it. They have some new leaves mm -hmm. growing on them, and they, some of them might come out of it. But I don't know, but I'm not going to lie. I did shed a few tears, yes. and I pouted for about three or four I hours. I had to console her. I pouted for about three or four hours. But it was my own fault because I should have protected They're coming. Them. They're starting to come back, though. In my greenhouse, my some of my stuff got nipped inside my greenhouse. Not bad, though. My dahlias, my peppers, and my tomatoes got burned a little bit inside the greenhouse because I didn't do a few things. Hello, Kay from Banks, day. Alabama. I've been out to Banks. Okay. Know where it is. Allison says, I mulch my dahlias heavy over winter, and they do come back, but we do have mild winters here. Okay, that's good to know. Um. Hey, Diana, I got my turmeric from Hoss in the Mail, too. I have never grown turmeric. I actually, I got a few turmeric roots from um, Marbury. Um, Deep South Homestead. Wanda at Deep South Homestead, we went and visited them. And I got a few turmeric Ooh. roots from her. And I grew, I've had them in a pot, just growing them in a pot. I never harvested them. I just put them in my greenhouse. So this will be my first time to really, really, really grow turmeric. And it's going to be new, but I'm super excited about How it. How do you pronounce that, Rebecca? What? Pew, 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 up. Pull you up, Washington. Never heard of that one. Hey, Eileen mm. from Marbury. That's not too far from us. Um, but yeah, I oh thanks. Hit the like button, like button, y'all. Um, I'm excited to grow turmeric. This is going to be my first time to really grow it and harvest it. We do use turmeric. It's really good. Now, for I inflammation. use some today in my shake. Really good for inflammation. So I'm excited to grow my own and powder it and use it ourselves i started doing a started doing shakes for lunch i've been trying to skip me skip a meal do a little intermittent gene type just mm -hmm. dig it type fast losing weight too. and so been using a lot of herbs different things um, protein but um yeah i had turmeric using it and yep. you know a lot of the stuff you buy in the stores tracy was telling me that she saw that it's got a lot of metals in it, heavy metals because a lot of it come from comes from china yeah so we're going to try to grow our own yep melanie starting your medicinal seeds this week awesome hey david david is muscadine creek creamery and mimi's baked goods yes dad. we What's love y'all and we love your girls they're yes. special girls chance Brittnell. uh <laughs> catherine wants me to make a list of something where'd it go right here of roses of 12 repeat bloom roses that are a must have i need at least four of them for climbers and at least four to be bush style repeat blooming roses uh katie road pink is a must i'm gonna name shrubs first and i'm just gonna do it on here because i figure a lot of y'all might want to know too katie road pink is a must makes big beautiful rose hips i grow that one for the rose hips i use the um I use them because they're super high in vitamin C. Katie Road Pink, Belinda's Dream is dreamy. <clears throat> Absolutely dreamy. That's Dream. Shrub Rose. Dream. Maggie is gorgeous. Um, all of these are repeat she bloomers. Um, let's see. A souvenir de la Malmaison Whoa, is language. beautiful. Uh, very, very sweet. 1800s. Um, let's see. Who are must haves? Gosh, that's hard for me, y'all, because I love them all. Peggy. There's so many I love. Let's go through some climbers. Peggy Martin, yes. definitely. Yes. Repeat bloomer, super tough. Famous from Hurricane, survived Hurricane Katrina. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's not a repeat bloomer. Uh, climbing Pinky. Climbing Pinky is uh, a must-have. Have you grown asparagus here? In yes, I do grow asparagus. Yes, mm -hmm. with our strawberries. Yeah, Companion plant them with strawberries. I'll make you a big long list, Catherine. Um, I so with asparagus, I you can you can start asparagus from seed if you want to, but that's going to take a really long time before you can actually harvest your asparagus. So I always buy the asparagus crowns, and I I get them from petals from the past, but you can order them too. So I plant those in February. 
the crowns, plant them in February, and you need to let them just, they're going to shoot up and kind of fern out. You want to let them just continue to do that for like two or three years so that that root mm -hmm. can really get developed and established. And then after about this, when you're planting a crown, you can actually harvest after the second year. But second to third year, you can start harvesting the asparagus. So it takes a little while. It's a perennial. So um, you want to plant it in a place you know, where it's going to be stationary because it's a perennial and asparagus does really good for us here in Alabama. Yeah. That Peggy Martin does spread because mm -hmm. we've seen some shoots. One in particular, is we're going to dig up and take to my parents. Climbing Ruth is a beautiful climbing rose. Um, Luanda's got it. It is gorgeous. It's like a traditional red rose balloon and it's a climber. How do you know when to harvest lavender? How do you know when to harvest lavender? Mm -hmm. When it blooms. Right. And I like to harvest the lavender. Like you can see when it starts developing the buds on the, depends on which kind of lavender you got, but all of them will, will bloom. And so when the little buds are developed, but right before they open up mm. fully, that's when I like to yeah, harvest my lavender. Clotilde Serpair, Clotilde Serpair. Very beautiful rose, very yes. fragrant. I have that one planted on both sides of the entrance into my gates. My friend Lacey gave it to me, and I love Clotilde's repair. Um, Jason, yes, Jason has um, climbing pinky at Cog Hill, and his is beautiful. Yes, it's it's looking good. Looks is gorgeous. Um, it's funny how we were talking about that today, last few days, like. Where they live, just a little while from here, but we live in this area where we're like two weeks behind everybody. He's blooming good, and we're still behind. It's crazy. Yeah, we're a little behind everybody. Um, um, gosh, when you ask me, my mind goes blank. The roses, there's so many gorgeous roses. I'm working on a potage garden. Nice. All right, Catherine, I need to come see your potage garden. Um, so I will probably freeze dry most of it and use a little fresh if that makes a difference. If you use it fresh, um, either way, you don't want to use much lavender when you're starts tasting perfumey. It gets real perfumey, just a little bit. It's all you need with your lavender. But yeah, freeze dry, dry, fresh, all those thanks, la Glenn. lavenders, thanks for lavender watching, Glenn. lassie beautiful rose lavender lassie is a gorgeous climbing rose and old blush it comes in a shrub form and a climbing form so that's a beautiful old rose um uh clotilde superior comes in a shrub and a climber souvenir de la malmay sun comes in a shrub and a climber farmer's dream is one of my favorite roses too it's it's um it's this cousin sister sport of belinda stream what was the rose that we got over at the hunting club that, that new was... dawn yes new dawn is a gorgeous light pink traditional looking rose bloom it was it's growing climber. out in the woods at this old home place and so we went out and dug it up pretty i mean that's a timeless rose right there new dawn is mm -hmm. we got it out here lamarck is a beautiful climbing white rose, but as it opens, it gets to be like a little lemony yellow color, very fragrant. That's a good climber. Um, okay, we'll move I on. I have to move on. <laughs> she gets talking about plants. We'll move on. Um, oh, I was going to tell y'all, when we went to see our grandbaby, we just took a little walk, a quick walk on the beach, and we oh, yeah. had a show. We don't have to go to uh, SeaWorld. We had a show, man. Wow, it was man. amazing. It was so calm. It was so Really cool. calm water. Mm -hmm. we, it was what? About 7, 30, 8 o'clock, somewhere in there? It, probably about 7 o'clock yeah, okay. in the morning. And there was about 20 dolphins, like 10 feet from the shore. And there was hardly any waves. I mean, it was just like glass. And they just, were just jumping and <laughs> flipping and playing and fishing. Fast. And diving you can watch them. And, and they would just. There was about 20 of them. Babies and older fish. ones. It and they was, weren't just doing the little. They were actually jumping up. Flipper, flipper. Mm -hmm. They were doing all kind of stuff. It was awesome. 
It was so cool. It was a show. Um, but yeah, we got to go see our grandbaby. He's so cute. He's just a chunk of love. Just love that kid so much. And our, we're, we've got a new grandbaby coming. Yep. And I think we're supposed to know the gender next week. They're going to have yeah, a gender yeah. reveal. So that's exciting. Yeah, yes. Too. Yep. Um, yes. Destin. Ding, oh, ding, let ding. me let me mention our events just in case you're new here and you don't know what all events we got going on in April. Coming up in April, we're going to be at Keepers of the Old Ways. Uh, I'm jealous of all of our friends that went to the Oakey Homestead. I know um, A and W Mini Farm went, Wendy and Allen, and I know Chestnut, Chestnut. Hills Farm. Nick and Zoe mm -hmm. went. Um, I don't know who all else went, but I bet that was a fun uh, conference. Um, so we're going to be at Keepers of the Old Ways Saturday, April the thirteenth. That event's going on Friday and Saturday. We're we're going to be there on Saturday, but um, that is in Landmark. Park. Yeah, it sounds right. Landmark Park in Dothan, Alabama. And we're going to go hang out with some of our friends there. Perry Hill Farms going to be teaching some classes. And um, uh, uh, Nicole from Hidden Oaks Homestead. Mm -hmm. Chip and Nicole. Chip and Nicole. And um, uh, Flomaton Famous is going to be teaching. All, all kinds of wonderful things going on. So we're, we're happy to go hang out there. Jean's going to do a few of the classes. I'm going to do a few other classes. And we're, we hope we get to uh, hang out with some of y'all. And then Saturday, April the 20th, is our Antiques in the Garden YouTubers Meet and Greet event at Petals from the Past in Jemison, Alabama. Saturday, April 20th from 9 to about 4. And um, that is always a fun day. There's antique vendors set up all in the gardens at the nursery. And um, the nursery alone is, is a place to visit. It's beautiful. And there'll be about, I can't remember how many of us are going to be there, 12 or so. 15. I can't remember how many of us are going to be there this year, but that's going to be a lot of fun. And we would love to um, get to hang out and talk to you, some of y'all. And everybody bring your instruments. Yeah, we'll sit down there and sing. Yeah, hey, we get down to fiddle and we get down on the bow, <laughs> kick off your shoes. We could uh, have a throw down down there. Um, and then on Tuesday, April 30th, I'm going to be teaching a protege class at the Botanical Birmingham Botanical Garden. That's where we got married. Yep, it is. We did get married at Botanical uh, Garden. Like I'm kidding. <laughs> so that's going to be fun. But if you want to attend that class, you do have to register. It's bbgardens.org. And there's a fee. You have to pay a fee. So Chance says, when it comes to garden, farming, and homestead, where do you get your inspirations and ideas? It's a good question. Um. We actually get a lot of homesteading ideas from YouTube, from YouTube. And there's a few shows we used to love to watch when we were just dreaming of this homestead. Actually, let me just go ahead and tell y'all. So <laughs> she took her glasses wait, off. It boys. gets serious when these babies come off. <laughs> so when uh, we lived in his mom and dad's basement after chance our youngest son graduated from high school and went off to college then we uh moved out of our house and we moved into his parents basement and we lived there for two and a half years do you have paid telephone consultations for protege gardens? two and a half years i'll come back to it remind me we lived there for two and a half years so um, we were saving up for this land saving up for our dream farm what we had always dreamed of and we used to watch these shows, Alaska, The Last Frontier. Life is simple. Life is good when you're living like you should. Hey, hey. <laughs> Go. Keep going. That's our new theme song. Keep going. You're supposed to sing the girl part. No, I don't sing. Um, so anyway, we watched all these shows about homesteading and gardening and farming and living off self the grid. Self-sufficiency. Self-sufficiency. The heck with the system. And we learned a lot watching all of those shows. Mm -hmm. And there's different ones on uh, YouTube that we watch mm -hmm. and we learn from. As far as 
where gardening inspiration comes from. Um, hmm. Pinterest. <laughs> Pinterest. I tell you, a lot of magazines. times, a lot of times, um, like when I'm driving, I, I, I'm in sales, so I drive all over the state and over the panhandle. And I'm not kidding you. I'm hardly ever watching the road. Like I'm watching how do they build this fence? How do they do their farm? And and I come back with different ideas just by looking at other people's farms all over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he figures out how to build fences I'll even stop, and everything. I'll even stop and take pictures of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've gotten a lot of ideas just yeah. from seeing what other oh, people I got several done. on my phone right now. Uh, different <laughs> conferences and stuff that we've been to. Mm -hmm. We've learned a lot and got a lot of inspiration from how other people farm and um uh and there's there's a lot of people that i watch that i get a lot of inspiration from and learn a lot of different things from um as far as gardening i don't know i just i just lay in bed dreaming <laughs> of gardens and garden designs we, <laughs> we when we get done working <laughs> during the day we have this uh like love seat sofa there's only a little space between us where we put our little drink or whatever, our phone. But she will, we will be sitting there 30, 45 minutes in. We can't watch an hour show because she's over there. I hear dreaming. She's already dreaming. She's lost. And I'm like, okay, let's go to bed. Because I have to start the show again and watch it. Does to watch a show twice, two nights. Diana pedals from the past does ship. So if you want to order something from them, they will ship it to you, which is awesome. They ship roses. They ship everything. Um, uh, Catherine says they want seen every episode of Alaska, the last frontier. Um, uh, there was a question about on, the consultation. For oh, Protégé paid con telephone calls. I'm sorry. I don't. I used to do garden design for a living. I went and did consultations and I did um, all kinds of design jobs, but had my own business doing that for a long time. But I don't anymore just because I don't have time. I United really Kingdom. Don't. We just but got you finished. Can watch, you can watch. I have lots of YouTube videos yeah. all about protege gardens. So we just finished watching The Crown. <laughs> We're behind the times, but we watched The Crown with the Queen. Oh, I this love the royal family. It's pretty cool. Um, I've been watching all your protege and design videos. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. I love to share about gardening. I love it. It yeah, is we would, my passion. We would love to go to um, England and go to the gardens in France, different places, and see see it in person. This go up. I awesome. a couple of things. Can, um, uh, there was a saw comment. That. I was gonna, yeah, Ooh, maybe don't. No, I don't know. I'm missing comments, but I'm afraid to go back. We hadn't quite figured That's all this out. Because we're double, double screening here. Tracy, you are an inspiration to me. Oh, thank <coughs> you very much. Very sweet. Very sweet. Um, <laughs> no, I don't. No, she though. What about the Ooh. new season of In Her Boots? Yes, we need to talk about In Her Boots. So. I was going to do the second season of In Her Boots last year. Got sick, and I just couldn't do it. Actually, we did go. We made a you couple of road couple trips. Of, couple of videos. And did a couple. We did. I, I, posted. I interviewed um, Jill Reagan with Whisper and Willow Farm. We went up there mm -hmm. at their home, homestead. Good old Nathan. And that was fun. That was a lot of fun. So I interviewed her. I interviewed um, Natasha with 1818 farms very cool flower farm and i interviewed wendy at a and w mini farm and i interviewed wanda at deep south homestead yep. so mm -hmm. i have four and i haven't posted them yet because i wanted to do you know a whole series and i didn't get to do it last year because right after those road trips i started getting sick and i just i wasn't able to do it and then spring comes around and it's, you know, it's too busy right now. I can't leave the farm right now. So um, we are, I am hoping, it is my plan that towards the end of fall to go back and do interviews. I've got a lot of people, a lot of 
wonderful, inspiring farm ladies, homestand ladies that um, uh, I want to interview. And I've already talked to about it. So I'm hoping this fall, towards the end of this fall, In Her Boots is going to be back. That is my plan. God willing. And the creek don't rise. It, you know. God willing, that's what my plan is for In Her Boots. I hey, really loved doing that, and I know it inspired Jesus. a lot of people. Oh, yes. Dublin, Ireland, National Botanical Gardens. <laughs> K-E-W. <coughs> um, oh, and one other event that I want to make sure I mention, September 14th is our Great Fall Garden Festival, and we haven't, <coughs> we haven't, signed up youtubers yet we haven't done anything on it yet because i figured out last year we needed to wait till after antiques before we got started on that because it kind of got a little bit confusing but as soon as antiques in the garden's over we're going to be going full force on getting that planned so y'all mark your calendar for september the 14th all day long nine to five petals from the past in jimison alabama there's probably going to be about 35 youtubers there to meet and greet and hang out it's going to be fun 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 um, so we had a question last week that we didn't, she sent, uh, Renee did a little poll on our Facebook and for questions. And this lady, Sharon Schrader sent in a question and we didn't answer it. We got caught up in our, in our own little world last week and didn't answer it. But she said, this is a very good question. Can y'all discuss how and why y'all have chosen to graze your animals including chickens continuous grazing versus moving and stationary coop versus a mobile chicken tractor so i thought we could discuss what we do with our animals and what we plan to do with our animals so our uh chickens i'll talk about our chickens you can tell about our goats hello from australia oh thanks Kelly. australia i want to go over there so bad yeah. so bad so our chickens, um, right now we have laying hens only, and they're in a chicken coop with a big run. And we keep them in there unless, like, there's nothing going on in the garden. If there's nothing going on out in the garden, I let the, we let the chickens out every day, and we let them just free-range forage. But most of the time, okay. there's something going on in the garden, yeah. and the chickens are put up in their coop. Yep. But as soon as we finish the fence around the protege garden, then we'll be able to let them out all the time and free yep. range. Yep. And we want to do that because they're healthier and they you don't have to buy as much feed and they eat bugs and they just, mm -hmm. you know, free range and forage and get all their vitamins and nutrients like that. And you can tell the difference in the eggs too, because the eggs will look, yeah, look so much more large. vibrant in color. So that's what we really want to do is just let them free range. And then, the, of course, they'll go back to their coop at night and we'll lock them up so no predators can get in there and get them. But until we get the fence done, we can't do that because the garden, <clears throat> you know, they would tear my garden up. And when we do, it's in our future plan to do meat birds. And when we do those, we've got a chicken tractor and we're going to run them in the chicken tractor. Mm -hmm. Because, you you know, it don't take long. You're just growing them up to Eight, process them. So mm -hmm. um, we'll run those in a chicken tractor. And we're planning to run them behind other animals because they, like, chickens mm -hmm. eat the Larva larvae out of cow poop and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And we're going to a class at Keepers of the Old Ways to learn. I mean, I've read Joel Salatin's books and you know, studied all that a little bit, but we're going to um, go try to learn more about the rotational grazing because that's really what we want to mm -hmm. do. And that's what we're working towards. Jean's been working hard on building um, uh, um, different paddocks. Um, we've yeah. got, we'll see, Sorry, one, two, three, about four different sections. Uh, we've probably got, it's a little over three acres probably about three acres pastured in, fenced in. So, And we're going to rotate them. Like we're going to rotate our animals throughout the pastures and hopefully be able to move other animals behind them. Right now we just have goats, chickens, rabbits. 
Honeybees. Honeybees and dogs and a cat that comes around every once in a while. Mm -hmm. But we have future plans for a cow. Yep. Pigs. Donkey. We've got future plans for other animals and we're going to move the pigs we want. Sheep They'll be too. separate. We're but sheep, sheep. I want some sheep. Meh. So, um, crazy lazy folk, uh, goat farm says, come by our booth. They're going to be there selling yep. soaps and all kinds of cool stuff they have. So hey, y'all go Sue. by and see them. Sue, hey, Sue. Sue. Hey, Sue. Are you coming to Keepers of the Old Ways? Uh, Diana says, God will, and I'll see you in September. I hope so. Arizona. Um, hey, Gail. I saw something earlier. Uh, I can't, you can't go back? No. I saw uh, Brown Thumb Nursery. I saw them on there. New hey, Mexico. Howdy. howdy. How you doing? Uh, they're Brown Thumb Nursery. They're going to be here at Antiques in the Garden. And um, Generation Homestead is their new name for their YouTube channel. So they're going to be joining oh, us. Wow. Sorry, I'm late from New Mexico. Hey, Patty. <laughs> prison pasture. Um, <laughs> prison pasture. There you go. So that that's why we do we want to do the rotational grazing. The reason why we want to is because you have healthier animals because like i said if you run chickens behind cows they eat the larvae out of the their poo and then the cows have less worms they're less worm pressure there's less issues and they're healthier and gene got a new toy tell us about your new toy so i got me a uh, uh got me a tiller for my tractor um i've got a john deere 3025e tractor and um I've got a four foot attachment tiller, which is four foot is plenty big enough for me, but using it for, we're not using it in a potage, but we, I use it out in the pasture, um, in the market garden out here. And then I'm going to use it in the goat pastures to plant like Pensacola Bahia, um, sun hemp. Um, right now I've got sorghum, millet, um, black sunflowers, all kind of good stuff for dove, uh, goats, just to build up that pasture and that soil. And um, it's a summer spring mix, spring summer mix. So um, it came up the other day and was sprouting, and that frost hit it. So I'm probably going to have to replant. Um, but anyway, that's what we're going to use that for. And also some good old deer plots down there on the edge of the tree line. But um, it's going to help out a lot because the chickens love sun hemp, the goats love sun hemp. It's like crack to them. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, they say that when you, chop and drop uh, sun hemp that you don't never have to fertilize. It keeps your soil perfect. You can actually chop it and put it underneath plants like a mulch. Yeah. They will thrive. We've used, we've ran it through our beds in the potage as a cover crop. So. I've talked to uh, Dr. Petcher. Oh, you want to read um, what Val says there? I t what is it? I'm thinking <laughs> So I, I, um, he I, has lost I've talked to Dr. Now. Petcher Thank and he, um uh he's awesome he he went to auburn university um that's the only thing i like about auburn but um he went no hey, he went Chris, to auburn hi. university and developed this this seed and um hey, and it's amazing um what it does for your soil and it grows very quick it's drought tolerant uh -huh. um you just don't want to let it get it too tall because you you're you, it thatches up and you can't you can't blend it in it's real fibrous from Texas? so you kind of keep it about a foot high uh, usually your goats better. won't let it get that high but yeah so we're gonna as we move the animals we're gonna disc that up and plant them a food plot mm -hmm. and then by the time they get back to that pasture they'll be able mm -hmm. to eat that so um do you get sun hemp from Hoss? i you, don't think they have sun hemp uh, do they? He may. I don't know. I've never I, seen. I've never seen them. Have I know Petals hair. has it, but I just go on to uh, Petcher P E T. I don't think Hoss has C H E R Seeds dot com. Petcher Seeds dot com. They have everything. But I need to find that out. Um, um, earlier, Jacqueline had said they wouldn't be able to have as many birds as they have if they didn't let them free range because the feed food feeds expensive. Especially if you're trying to grow them more. Well, our, our chickens, when we let them out, they go all out in the woods. And mm -hmm. um, we've got two big roosters. And they say that if you've got a black, large rooster, that your predators are less likely to come around your hens. So, and it, we haven't really had a problem 
now we got Clyde. He he barks and runs the birds off. So yeah, runs the postman, the UPS. Yeah. The UPS. Everybody's scared of him. Everybody's scared of him. He's, <laughs> He's a horse. A horse. Oh. So we got big project plans for this weekend. We are up. Oh, Wanda has alpaca socks for Eugene. Oh my gracious! Yeah, he loves those alpaca socks. Yes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we have big plans this weekend. Oh, hold Project on. Project plans. Um, no, I would not put them sun hemp in a raised bed as a cover crop. This stuff grows six to eight feet tall. And um, um, you can keep it you, cut. If you keep it cut, but it's it it'll grow very thick. And it has a it has big roots. Yeah, too, it's, like it's, big. it's 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 if not you're bamboo. Talking about like a four by eight raised bed, I wouldn't do no. that. No. But like my beds are like fifteen by forty, and it worked good in my yeah, beds. Yeah, yeah. Um, what I would do, I what I suggest <laughs> doing is just um, get you a trial bed and just put a few seeds in it and see what it does for you. But um, yeah, you don't have to plant it deep. Basically, it's seed and soil contact, and it'll come up. But you're not supposed to plant it. I think until around May, it has mm -hmm. to warm up pretty good. Yeah. Um. So our big plans for this weekend. Another one. <laughs> phone calls. Oh, sorry. Phone consultations. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't do design consultations anymore, just because I don't have. Um, I don't have enough time to do. Consultations. So there's that word again. Big. What are, what are you them, doing what are for the called? big cicadas? <laughs> yeah. Cicadas. Cicadas. What are you doing for the cicadas? We're having them a party. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, we, never had a problem with them. Uh, uh I mean, I do they cause a problem? I love listening to them. I like them because they. I didn't know they caused any kind of problems. I've never had them cause me a problem. Yeah. Um. What uh, kind of tea? What was I saying? Oh, our tea. It's a mixture of lemongrass, lemon balm, lavender, chamomile, yarrow, elderflower. It's a good it's a good thing we're in the house right now because if we were outside and it was daytime, I would have a swarm going in my mouth because lemongrass, yeah. honey, yeah. Yeah. it'll be tearing us up. So our projects for this weekend, we are going to be working on our orchard. We added a new addition to our um we added a new addition to our protege garden and it's an orchard, orchard berms that go around the whole thing. We're making a wall out of fruit. And then the center of it is going to be like a market garden style garden where we're planting, where we're going to be planting gourds and pumpkins and melons and sweet potatoes and um, I don't know, all kinds of flowers, mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. So this weekend we're going to be working on those fruit berms and trying to finish those up. Mm -hmm. And, um, um, getting the market garden ready to plant. And we've got to inspect our bees because I know they've probably filled up another box. Mm -hmm. And we, um, we're gonna what else are we a, doing? Oh, put yeah. up part of a wall. We're, we do the protege, protege um, walls around the whole perimeter in, in sections because it's so expensive. But we're going to do another little section hopefully this weekend. Yeah, that's the plan. And we're going to use it, this section we build to grow beans on. Yeah. All kind of green beans. And Bean, pole beans and peas. Yes. And then this fall, I'll plant muscadines on them. And that's going to be the mm -hmm. muscadine wall. So Rob's trying to keep me on, on a uh, plan here. What's the big plans for the weekend? <laughs> Um, so that's what we're going to be doing, building part of the protege fence, finishing up the orchard, mm -hmm. inspecting bees, mm -hmm. finish getting the market garden ready. And I got another oh, yeah, project got another and project. it came in the uh, UPS the other day. Gene I, is about to go to college to be an engineer. Oh man. <laughs> <clears throat> so last night I, I went out and did the unboxing of everything and oh my gracious. I didn't realize it was going to be this. It's not really difficult. It's just. Well, what is it? You ain't told them what it is. I, I've got a, a really nice solar pump digital panel that's pro programmable. And um, it's, this thing has, it's 
solar panels as big as our farm table here, if not bigger. It's a uh, uh, eight panels and they're 100, 100 watts per panel. So it's 800 watts solar panel. I've got to put all that together. And uh, luckily I already have the piping laid. Um, I've just got to figure out all the different check valves and things. And I was, I've been reading the book. So it's going to be a little complicated. It's going to be our irrigation. It's going to save us a lot of money. That's for sure. And a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So our protege garden, I have been hand watering with a hose pot. Yes. This and all the chemicals time. that's in that water, it really burns the plants up. It doesn't, you can get a rain and the rain water is so good. You can water it with a hose Rainwater pipe. Rainwater has nitrogen in it's it. It's horrible. Yeah, rainwater has nitrogen in it. That's why rainwater does, mm -hmm. makes your plants so much better. But yeah, we're excited to get irrigation to the garden because y'all know when you plant a garden and in June, July, and August, if you're not out there watering it, it's not going to make it. And I've watered the garden, that whole garden out there yeah. with a hose pot for the last six, seven years. Okay, so they're saying that the cicadas, they have two hatchings this year. I had heard that. But um, uh, Luanda said they wiped out her whole entire garden for a few years in a row. My goodness. I've never had a problem with them. Well, wow. I hope we don't this year. Generations Homestead. What what time zone are y'all in? That's Rob and Deb. Because they Rob just and came Deb. in. They must have had flashlights. That's why. They said they just came in from the chicken yard. Their chicken yard, Gene. That's Rob and Deb. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Rainwater is magic. Central. Yes, it is magic. So that's our big plans for the weekend. I hope we uh, get a lot done. And then, uh, of course, Sunday's Easter, Good Friday. Yes. I'm hoping Good Friday to be planting some. Uh, and then Easter, uh, of course, we're going to church. And then after, my mother's coming down to spend the night with us. So we'll go to church with my mom Where'd and Jean's mom and dad. I will be getting muscadines from Petals from the Past. That's where I'll buy my muscadines. Once you're a petal, you're for always from the past. They ship too. So I'm going to get the bronze and the purple. So the... Um, yes, God does know how to water a garden. Scepanons, yep. And uh, muscadines. When I worked at Petals, it's funny. One time I had somebody come in. <laughs> Don't worry, me, Deb. He didn't remember us either. <laughs> what? Oh, uh, that's right. Um... Anyway, when I worked at Petals from the past, we had I had this guy come in one time and asked me, "Did I? You got any scupperdines? <laughs> scupperdines? Y'all got any scupperdines out here?" I had to think about it for a minute. And I said, "Oh yeah, we got some." So it was a mixture of a scupperdine and a muscadine. He was just putting them uh, together, a scupperdine. That reminds me of that time at, at, at Petals from the past. I was a greeter type bouncer type person up there. And uh, these people came up and asked, uh, where's the hens and chicks? <laughs> so I said, I was looking around everywhere for hens and chicks. And I, I said, well, we don't, they don't have any chickens or hens up here today. <laughs> and uh, finally, somebody came up to me and said, uh, that's a plant. <laughs> Y'all know hens and chicks is a sedum. It's one of the sedums. And Gene... Whenever we had special events, I don't know if you just said this or not, but when we had special events at Petals from the Past, Gene would just work as the bouncer just Jason, occasionally. Yeah, Jason. So he didn't know anything about the nursery. He was just there as to, hey, go here, hey, go there. And this lady asked me, you got any hens and chicks? <laughs> we don't, they don't have chickens here. Yeah, I got some hens and chicks. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Yes, it's a succulent. Um. That was pretty funny, though. Uh, yes, Jason and Brooke has muscadines. They sure do. Yep. Um, I I don't know which ones I'm going to go with. I know I'm going to go with uh, Pam and Darlene. Those are bronze, big, sweet, yummy ones. Oh, yeah. And Those then I'm going to go with, um, <coughs> I think it's Black Beauty. 
I don't know. I'm going to pick a few good ones. Well, I tell you, you our, got, they got to have cross pollinators, though. I'm excited you got about to our, have a cross pollinator. You got to have a self fruitful one mm. to go with the the ones that need cross pollinators. Our blackberries are looking the best they ever had. I can't. I, I can't wait till this year. We're going to have some. some good blackberries for sure. For sure. Yes, and that means cobbler. Yes, we're going to have some good blackberries. Um, we grow them on a trellis system. Jason at Cog Hill grows them on a trellis system too. And it, it was developed by Dr. Powell at Petals from the Past. It's called a T-Pups system. Mm -hmm. And um, I love growing them like yeah. that. It's work. It's a work. Just getting started it but, is. But <clears throat> no, it's you... work because it's process. Throughout the year, you've got to do different pruning and training and it's a bit of a process but when you grow them on this trellis system hey jackie it um makes it so much easier to harvest them and it makes big blackberries like the size of my thumb blackberries mm. and they're sweet and they're good yep. the blackberries that we grow are kiowa k-i-o-w-a mm. they're not a thornless variety they do have thorns but they're really the best blackberry to me. They have a longer life, more disease resistant. They'll last a long time. They, um, they're just a good blackberry. Yeah, yeah. There's some good uh, thornless varieties too, but I really like the Kiowa. Uh, we got some questions here. Let me see. Strawberries, strawberries looking, looking good. good. Great. My strawberries look good too, especially my ones in my green stalk. They're looking good. Best rows for growing on the side of a she shed office. I have Peggy Martin, a few others. Jason's talked about CP that I knew I had to have. Yes, Peggy Martin, um, Climbing Pinky, Lamarck is a pretty white one, Clotilde Serpair. Um, I'm going to put a list in here after the show. Uh, Catherine was asking for a list. So I'll come back after the live and in the comment section, I'll put down some roses for y'all. Um, there were some questions before. We're missing questions. If we missed your question and you really want to answer, do it again because I'm missing everything. Thank you, uh, Diana, for telling me my hair looks pretty. She didn't tell me that. <laughs> hey, Carla. Uh, this is the year I have Blackberry Sue. All right. Um, so... Our blackberries are looking good. And if you want, if you've never grown them on a trellis and you want to know how to grow them on a trellis, uh, we, I've got some good videos on that on the YouTube channel. And Dr. Powell at Puddles from the Past has some good videos too. Mm -hmm. I picked up a couple of muscadines when I went to Jarvis early in spring. Yes, I'm looking forward to growing my muscadines. Is it too late to start, start strawberries in a green stall? Um, yeah, kind of. You're really not, unless they're big and established, you're really not going to get fruit this but what, year. But, but you could go ahead and plant them. Uh, but aren't, isn't she down in Florida? She yeah. Could probably, I she think. could probably do it in Florida. Yeah, she probably could. I don't, well, I don't know. I don't know. It depends on what there. zone you're in, in uh, Jackie. It's frustrating when you talk about things that are not available in Australia uh, or what, in the UK? What? I yeah. lost her in the UK. Yep. Sorry. I can only talk about things I know about. <laughs> um, so let me tell you what we got going on in the orchard. We have, uh, I planted five apple trees. I've planted, um, Arkansas black, which is a great heirloom apple. It's later. So it starts producing around, I want to say August or so. And I got a Yates, which is an antique apple, and it's a late one. And I did ginger gold, which is a delicious apple. It's compar comparable to Granny Smith. It's a good pie, um, good apple for pie, but it's also just a good eating crisp apple. Um who else did I do? I did Gala and Fuji. So those are the apples. I'm persimmons. Gonna two, I got two Fuji persimmons, which is your oriental persimmon. And you eat them like, uh, just like an apple. They're so good. They have like a clove kind of fall flavor to them. 
And I'm doing two Asian pears. We've got figs. Um, I've got uh, about six figs, six different figs. We've got, um, we're going to do muscadines, kiwi, and we've got blackberries, blueberries, pomegranates, strawberries, so goji you, berries. She's got apricots. and. Uh... <coughs> we can't really grow apricots that well here. We don't get enough chill, up or chill hours. How many chill hours on are the apples? apples? The chill hours on the apples are, um, they're low on those apples. I can't remember exactly how much I have to look it up, but there we can grow them here in mm. Alabama. And so there will be a yeah. low chill. Hour. Actually out there at Petals from the past along the road, Dr. Powell has all those apples espaliated across there on by the road. <coughs> and they are, he gets a lot of apples <coughs> off that, that run. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> I want to say the chill hours on those was like 900 to 1100. I can't really remember, but we get enough chill hours for those apples. Now, things like cherries and apricots, we don't get enough chill hours. Okay, Migs, where do y'all, which Costco are you going to? She's up north. Oh. She is. Don't say, we'd run into each I other. I forgot exactly where you are, but she's, she, um, she can grow those cherries and apricots. Uh, can we grow nectarines? Because if we can, we can't. Oh man, <laughs> we my can little grow my grandson loves him some nectarines. <laughs> Y'all should see the video of him eating one the other night. He was like, <coughs> he like a piranha. Them. Um, so that's our fruit. I can't. Uh, I don't know if I'm missing anything. We did. We planted a fruit orchard when we first moved here. And we had a lot of things out there, Beaches. but it was super hard to grow up way out there because of deer, neighbors, cows, all kinds of stuff tearing them up. Oh, we're eight thirty. Good gracious, it goes by too fast. <coughs> Our tea is lemongrass, lemon balm, elderflower, Honey. chamomile, yarrow, cinnamon, Ceylon cin cinnamon, lavender, lime, chamomile. Honey, uh, somebody had said earlier we got the whole herb garden in our cup. Uh, <laughs> it's do. nothing like herbs, <coughs> or some people say herbs. <coughs> I'm experimenting with different tea blends, and I really do like this one. It is and good. It's, this it's is good. a good tea blend for sinus, which oh, you can hear. I've got I like cough. it hotter, though. It's cooled off. <coughs> no chill hours in Orlando. You're right, Miss Sue. <laughs> you are right. <coughs> Um, so Deb is, uh, with Generation Homestead is going to be one of my In Her Boots interviews. They got a cool story, a very cool story. So I'm excited that Can we're going to do that one. Pawpaw trees. We had some. Pawpaws are native here. Yeah. Pawpaws are definitely native here. I have some. We still got one out in, there. Out there in the orchard. You just, over. you got to have two to pollinate. I had some, but they're... We planted them right in front of the honeybees, so I don't like going out there. can't get to them. Those honeybees fight us over. Right I'm so the... glad y'all talk about the tea. I made a couple of lemon balm, spearmint, and peppermint, and it was just what I needed to wrap up the day. Yes. Aww. Yes. I love my tea time. herbal teas. And I'm having so much fun experimenting with these blends. Maybe if I get really good at them, we might sell tea blends. Maybe if I can get good at them. Um, well, y'all, it is, we've been talking for an hour and four minutes. It's a long time. I think we talked about everything, though. Hey, if y'all got any questions that you want us to answer next week or anything you want us to talk about or whatever, send, send me an email, justdigitfarms.com. Or and put it I, on the comments down there real quick. And we'll go back and read them. I we will address them if you let us know what you want to talk about. Yeah, I'm glad we're doing lives too. Jean's been on me for a year to do lives, and I just I don't know. I really didn't think I'd be able to talk. I have enough stuff to talk about for an hour, oh. which is real stupid because I can talk. 
I can talk about she, gardening for she told me days. The other, she told me the other day, Sid, and I, I'm horrible with accents, but she told me the other day she talks. Her her voice that talks in her head is a is a British <laughs> like Monty. Let's let's back up. <laughs> I don't have a voice that talks in my uh, head. Oh yeah, you do. What I'm saying is, I don't know. You're y'all are most of y'all are gardeners. So if you're out in your garden and you're working and you're thinking, you know, you're thinking about what you're doing or what you're gonna do, or you're kind of talking to yourself, but you're thinking. And my voice that thinks about gardening is Monty, good. Monty Don's good voice. <laughs> <laughs> I can talk. I, I have that Wales or that English accent when I'm when I'm working in my garden and it's in my head. I've got that on my GPS. It's my That's yes. It. Monty Don is your inner monologue. That's <laughs> what I've been trying to say. <laughs> That's it. Oh, that no. is it. Oh my but God. then when I try to say it, it don't come out like that at all. <laughs> Southern slang into it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pam. Hey, Pam. Pam Cole Wallace. Is this Sunny. is this uh Nana and Papa's Pam? Oh my gosh. Sue Susan's voice is Irish. So if it is. Pam Cole Wallace. Yes. So her Pam's mom and dad babysat my little brother his whole life. Like they were his nanny and his his nana and his papa. And I was a little older, so I didn't they wouldn't babysit me as much as they did my brother. But I spent hours and years oh. with them and pam and paula took me to school so i didn't have to ride school bus i thought i was big stuff they helped me sneak and wear makeup and then i had to wash it off before my mama got home <laughs> and her her mama used to come up there and, and catch me when i would be hot and be up at tracy's house yeah watching tv and then call the principal and I'm get in trouble Look, it's certainly not not British. It's real southern. It's real southern. <laughs> yes, it's real southern. That's for sure. But the one in my head is British. Um. Well, hey, Pam. Right. It's good. Uh, well, it's not good to see you because I don't see you. But very cool. Been a long, long time. Long, long time. Good night. Man. Well, y'all, we are gonna sign off of here, and we will see y'all next Monday night at 7 30 p.m. here at the farm table and we hope you all have a wonderful blessed good Friday and Easter Sunday yes yep good night y'all just dig it we love y'all